I would like to introduce you to the motivation and ideas that underpin the ceramic monkeys entitled scavengers, the ceramic statues of young people, and fish and puppet heads co-created with elderly people suffering from dementia. In January 2018, I was a resident artist at the beautiful Sanskriti Foundation on the outskirts of New Delhi. The foundation holds an outstanding collection of Indian textile art, ceramics and everyday objects. Having never visited India nor New Delhi before, I was absolutely fascinated by the amount of wildlife in this mega city that covers about 1,500 square kilometers, which is also sadly known for its infamous giant rubbish heaps, terrifying traffic and air pollution. Amongst the daily swells of people moving in and around New Delhi are a large number of razor's monkeys, bats and black kites. All four species share the same urban concrete space. Whilst the black kites feed off the small rodents that are ubiquitous in densely populated areas, they also accept pieces of meat tossed to them by religious Muslims for whom kite feeding is a century-old ritual. Circling in the hot air above the traffic, overgrown ruined mosques and ancient Mughal palaces, they keep a cautious distance to humans, which are prone to steal their chicks or destroy their nests. However, the 30,000 plus monkeys share parks, roads, pavements, bins, street food and oranges with humans. Cheeky and annoying scavengers, they are also regarded by the vast majority of the population as the living representative of the Hindu god Hanuman. Near the entrance area of the beautiful Lodi Park, a small unassuming memorial dedicated to Gandhi depicts the three wise monkeys. In my Sanskriti Foundation studio, I found myself being observed by the resident monkeys as at the same time I was observing them. And the more I looked, the more I saw us humans in them. I felt like watching children, teenagers or mischievous adults and caring mothers. Gestures and gazes are uncunningly similar to ours and the question of otherness begins to blur. Whilst deeply held religious beliefs and traditions have come to regulate, to some extent protect, the kites and rhesus monkeys within the urban fabric of New Delhi, a short piece of fiction, a report to the Academy, written in 1917 by the famous Jewish writer Franz Kafka, retells the story of cultural assimilation through the eyes of a captured monkey, who, in order to survive his torment, mimics human behavior to such a degree that he becomes more human in his job as circus performer. The tragedy of this cultural assimilation is double bound. He lost all language and memory of his original and native identity, whilst his new identity, the copy of an average European, is not recognized nor accepted by his audience of academicians. My group of ceramic monkeys, entitled Scavengers, provokes these questions relating to identity and how to culturally define spaces of coexistence and cohabitation with others and otherness. The 15 sculptures of teenagers and older children, of which I am showing you a few, celebrate that space in which the other is allowed to be other. I see it as a space in which uncertainty is embodied in gestures and attitudes. At the same time, when I created these sculptures, the UK media was filled with negative headlines about young people's behaviour, and evening curfews were introduced for parks and public spaces in some towns and cities. I really resented this approach. How can a society be so negative and so oppressive about its own future, that is embodied in the young people. And why were there no contemporary sculptures that actually celebrated the awkwardness, insecurities and bravado of the young? I set about making statues of young people, bearing in mind that the ancient Greeks had created celebratory statues of youth. I created a group of doubles by modeling one sculpture in the image of the previous one. That is to say, they are not casts. 
As such, the double symbolize the present and the future, or the real and the projected self, the self and its reflection. Slight shifts in gesture suggest movement, and as doubles, they provocatively confront the viewer. But they look right through the viewer into the far distance, or they refuse to look, as if not quite ready to face the world. These doubles, entitled Don't Know, Waiting, Sleeping Beauty, and If Only, are life-size, made in sections, painted and sometimes dressed. My motivation to make sculpture is deeply and profoundly linked to love and the ability to see beauty in the other, a beauty that is celebratory of life and life-affirming. However, this beauty is not without difficulties, erosions and scars. I understand beauty as seasonal or cyclical, and this philosophy has given me a starting point into my most recent project, which I will be introducing through a workshop at the Korean International Ceramics Biennial. Part of a collaborative project between Belong Village, a dementia care home provider, the Blue Coat Gallery Liverpool, the Atkinson Gallery Southport and the Grosvenor Museum Chester, I have created clay workshops with elderly people suffering from dementia. Fish and puppet heads are some of the works made. Whilst the elderly people model the clay, I fire and glaze them. For care workers and participants, these workshops have been a real eye-opener. For me, it is fascinating to experience that through the hands alone, some, perhaps very faint and distant image, can be translated into form. When words and speech have receded, or have become looped, or are shuttered into tiny fragments, the hand, together with the eye, can still make something, which is imbued with meaning. Who says we should stop making or building and playing with mud at any stage in our life?